Hey guys, welcome to Sugar on Sunday. And of course, this is a very special Sunday because it is Mother's Day. And what an opportunity we have to celebrate someone who absolutely gave us life, brought us into the world. I'll tell you what. And so I picked up the phone today, of course, and I called my mom, told her just how precious she is to me. And mom, I love you just as much as ever. You know that's true. And guys, I would say, get out there. If you haven't done it yet, pick up the phone, call your mom wish her a happy mother's day now having said that i'd say this a lot of times you're gonna i have talked to people who look aren't having the best relationship with their parents but being a parent myself one thing i can tell you for sure is no parent is perfect guys walk in grace walk in mercy just pick up the phone i'm telling you what it'll do wonders in your life down the road to be sure now guys what i want to talk to you about today is this Something that I believe each and every one of us have struggled with in a big, big way. And it does not matter where you're at in your life, whether you think you're on the lowest of the totem pole or you're the king of the castle, really doesn't matter. Most of us have all experienced this for sure. And guys, what I'm talking about is when we feel like we've let our own self down. We feel like we've blown it. We said something, did something, thought something or whatever. And we feel like, why did I say that? Why did I do that? Why did I lose my temper like that? Why? Did... And we just get so down on ourselves. And it might not even be something like that. It could be a trivial thing. But we just get so down on ourselves. And look, I have talked to some extremely successful people in business, in, in sports, and all of that kind of stuff. And you know what, guys? They go through this emotion just like everybody else does. Sometimes the people that we admire, we look up to them, we think, wow, they just got it all together. And you know what? When they're in their quiet time alone, they look back and say, oh my gosh, boy, is there a lot of work to do in me. And I'll tell you what, now, what normally, what happens a lot of times is this, is we just don't have grace for ourselves. We just don't, it's not that we kind of like want to tolerate the weaknesses. That's not what I'm talking about. But learning to walk in mercy and grace towards ourselves is what's going to enable us to walk in mercy and grace towards others. And that's something that I think all of us have to do. Now, one of the things is this. A lot of times what keeps people away from God, away from pursuing that intimacy with him or having that time alone with God is they just feel they've blown it so bad that somehow, you know, they're just ashamed to go into God's presence, which is the absolute opposite of what his invitation for us is. Because remember this, it is impossible to disappoint somebody who knows everything you're ever going to think, say, or do from the time you were from the cradle to the grave. God knows. Do you think he loves you any less because of that? Well, the scripture says not on your life. Nope. In fact, what the scripture says is while we are yet sinners in the worst of our condition, that's when he sent his son to pay the penalty of our sin, to die for us in our place. Absolutely. He gave his very best when we were at our absolute worst. And I believe that wholeheartedly. And I've watched it change my life in a powerful way. Do you know why the gospel is called the gospel? Because the gospel means good news. Do you know what that good news really is? That good news is this. God is not expecting you to measure up. No, he realizes who you and I are in our fallen state. No, he came and paid a debt that we could never pay. That's the good news. And the good news is we do not have to work it to have a relationship with him. No, what we have to do is surrender ourselves to him in faith and allow him to do the work in us where the scripture says he who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it and do not allow the enemy to just boggle your mind down with guilt condemnation and all of that stuff because of past things that you may have thought said or did or things you're struggling with do you not think that god already knows of course god already knows and he loves you just the same and he does not want you to feel so estranged like that in fact one of the most amazing passages of scripture in the old testament was where he was actually coming out and say come and let us reason together if your sins are like scarlet i'll make them white as snow if they're red like crimson, I'll make them like wool. He says, if that's the problem or you feel you don't measure up, don't worry. I'll take care of that too. You just come. 
That is the kind of God that we serve. He is not looking for an opportunity to condemn you. He's looking for a way in which to rescue you. In fact, that's what John 3, 17 says. It says, God sent his son into the world not to condemn it, but that through him the world might be saved. Now, we can overcome in this area. And it is a big, big deal. Why? Because it just holds us back from the potential that God has for us. And he wants you to know you're an overcomer and you can make it. Do not ever believe that you can't. In fact, the scripture says, if you fall down seven times, a righteous man, by the way, falls down seven times, yet the Lord will lift them up. You know what I call that? Instead of falling down, I call it falling up. It's where we fall in at the foot of his throne. And we go to him for the grace that we need. Now, that is the scripture I want us to read. And it's only a few verses. It's in Hebrews chapter 4. And we're going to read starting at verse 14 just to verse 16. Now, listen to this. Let it really, really sink in. It says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. That is absolutely amazing. God is not, Jesus himself was not somebody who just skated through life and did not face temptation. He did. He knows what it feels like in all points like we were. He is not a strange that, and he has sympathy for us. He understands. Do you know what it says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13? It says, no temptation has seized us. Isn't that how it feels when a temptation gets you? You just feel seized by it. It says, no temptation has seized us, but what is common to man? And God is faithful. He will not allow us to be tempted beyond what we can bear. But when we are tempted, he provides a way of escape under it. Now, guys, Usually when the enemy comes to you, there's two kinds of temptation. And I'm not done reading this verse here because there's one more verse I want to read here in Hebrews, but I'm not done yet. But I want to say this. There's two kinds of temptation. First, that the temptation to lose it. Well, you just get so tempted to get angry and you just let them have it. Then afterwards, you're like, oh my gosh, why did I do that? Or whatever the temptation is. The first temptation is, you know, to do the deed, right? <laughs> to act in the way yet you really don't like to act. You know what the second temptation is? To just not go to God with it and to feel absolutely condemned and to just sit there in self-pity and condemnation. Why? Because what you're really saying is you're trusting in your good behavior when it comes to your relationship with God. And that is not what the truth is. The truth is you're accepted, loved, received just as you are. You know that Billy Graham song, Just As I Am Without One Plea, But That Thy Blood Was Shed For Me. And, you know, and as thou bids me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. God's calling us just as we are, warts and all. And he receives us just like that. Now, I want to read this last verse, and it's verse 16. We just went through verse 14 and 15 of Hebrews 4. Listen to what verse 16 says. It says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Guys, it does not say let's come boldly before the throne of his omnipotence. Let's come boldly before the throne of, you know, his all-knowingness. And let's come boldly before, and, and then just kind of, no, it says let's come boldly. And that's another thing too, actually, point. Let's come boldly before the throne of grace. Boldly. Interesting. You don't feel so bold when you've blown it and you know you've blown it in every way, do you? You don't feel feel so bold to do that. But it says that we might find mercy. Because the Bible says his mercies are new every morning. They're new every morning. And the second thing it says, and grace, where we can find help in our time of need. It's not strength we need. It's grace we need. We need his grace. We need his mercy. We need the, 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 just the infusing of the Holy Spirit on the inside so that when we do lose it, whether it's because we got upset with a child or, you know, maybe a spouse 
or you know maybe they don't even know and 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 you know it's a, a hidden sin that we're dealing with or something like that maybe we're letting ourselves down because we've tried so hard to stick to a diet and then we blow it or we're trying to kick a habit that we know is not good for us and we just feel like we're just locked into it and there have been people i know what that feels like and you get into that place and you just feel like you're worth less in that capacity and it doesn't matter there are highly successful people financially in this world that and and sports and and you know in every field and you would look to them and you think wow they got it all together and in their private life guys they are falling apart i kid you not i've spoken to people like that i've known people like that and i just want to let them know and let you know look you're gonna make it you can make it god loves you with every ounce of his being he loves you. Now, I want you to think of this too. I don't know how old you are right now, of course. I'm 56 years old, and I'll tell you what, what. I know that I probably have more life behind me than I do ahead of me, unless I'm going to live to like 114, and God's grace, maybe I will. But the point I'm making is this. We're going to spend more of our existence outside of these bodies than in them, according to how he made us. And you know what? God is, is going to, God has a plan for you from the very beginning all the way through your entire existence. We had a beginning, but we will have no end. God knows you and he loves you and he desires you. And he's not looking down over his shoulder thinking, oh, what a disappointment. That is not who he is. In fact, the Bible says all of our righteousness, all of them, no matter who we are, is like filthy rags. Our hope and our confidence and our boldness need to come because we've been at the throne of mercy and grace. God loves you. Don't you ever give up on yourself. Don't let the enemy get you believing that somehow you have blown it so bad that you're beyond redemption. That is an absolute lie. And don't worry about what's going to happen tomorrow and all that like Jesus said. Don't worry about tomorrow. Let the, Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Tomorrow will worry about itself. God's got you. He's got you in the very palms of his hands and he loves you. And he is inviting you into a place where you can have victory by knowing his mercy and grace. Now, I'm going to share something with you. I used to struggle with things in my life all the time, and I'd work at it, work at it, work at it. And you know what? I just kept messing up, messing up, messing up. Do you know when I really found victory? Is when I surrendered all that work and let him do it, and let him do it. He who began a good work in you is faithful to complete, and I started to really receive the grace that God gave me and, you know, things just started falling off, falling off. Didn't struggle with that. Didn't think like that anymore. Didn't talk like that anymore. On and on and on. And my world changed. And it's not that people change. It's that God changes people. And I know there's a lot of people out there, oh, well, they, I don't believe that. They don't believe it. They don't believe in God. They don't believe in this. They don't believe in that. But I'll tell you what. Scripture says you need to taste and see that the Lord is good. And I've, I did that. And it, cha it changed my world in a way that I, I, I don't even have the words to genuinely describe it. I wish I could. I really wish I could. And boy, I'll tell you what, if I could absolutely talk you into it, I would give every ounce of my energy to talking you into it because that's how much I know it's true. But the fact of the matter is, I can't talk you into it. And if I could, there's probably someone else out there that could talk you out of it. This is where you go out there and it says in God's word, if you seek me, you will find me. If you search for me with all of your heart, I will be found by you. And I'll tell you what, when you find out who he is and the revelation of who he is and how who he's made you to be, it's something that it's talk about a revelation, an awakening, an illumination, whatever you want to call it. But it is a absolute transformation and you'll never be the same again. You will never be the same again. Don't give up. Just don't give up. Keep playing. So what if it's three steps forward, two steps back? That seems to be the way life goes. Just keep making progress. Just keep going. Just keep going. Just keep going. Do not give up because you're going to make it. You are going to make it despite what everybody else has to say. God before you, who can be against you? That's what the scripture says. And he is for you. He is for you. He is not looking down over his shoulder at you, thinking what a disappointment. That is not who he is. That's not who his heart is. For God so loved the world. God so loved. You put your name in there. God so loved David that he gave his only begotten son. That's what I'm saying to myself. You put your name in there. God so loved 
you know, whatever your name is, you know, you put your name in there, name it, that he gave his only begotten son so that if David believes, you know, he'll have everlasting life. He's not going to perish. I'm going to do something new in you. He's going to do something new. That's his promise to us. Guys, we all fall down. What we need to learn how to do is how to fall up. Fall up, fall at his feet. Don't fall, you know, and, and, and just stay down like that. Let him lift you up. Let him make you into something that you absolutely thought impossible to happen. And yet he can do it just like that. One word from God can absolutely change your life forever. I'll tell you what. Now, let me just take a few seconds to bless you. Father, I want to thank you in the name of Jesus that you love us with an everlasting love. Your word says that love keeps no record of wrongs. You are not adding up all, tallying up all our bad deeds. No, your heart's desire was that you would come to seek and to save us so that we could be absolutely redeemed, made into the children of the living God. And Father, I pray that whomever is watching and hearing this, that you would impress upon their spirit that the truth of who you are in their life, that you are their rescuer, their redeemer, their restorer. Lord, that your desire is to make them into new creations and that old would pass away and all things would become new and they would be made more than conquerors and absolute overcomers. Lord, I pray they would not give up no matter how discouraged they feel, no matter how many times they've fallen down, that they get back up each and every time. And Father, I pray that they would find that absolute deliverance in your mercy and in your abundant grace through the Lord Jesus Christ, who you sent to Calvary on our behalf. And I thank you and who was raised from the dead so that we also could have newness in life. And so, Lord, I lift them up before you and I bless them in Jesus' mighty, precious name. Amen. Guys, I sure hope you got a lot of encouragement out of that. I'll tell you what. And I cannot wait. Next week, or tomorrow, we're going to start our, sugar, our, sorry, our, our, hey, coffee chats in the morning and talking about all the current events in this space. But guys, I'll tell you what, we're not storing up our treasure here on earth. We're actually really storing it up in heaven where we know we're going to spend more time there than we ever are here. But in the meantime and in between time, God is out there to bless us with his amazing and abundant grace. So guys, I'll tell you what, have an absolutely fantastic Mother's Day. Share the love of your family with one another and be encouraged. And until next week, have a great one and take care.